I'm going to walk you through a basic image edit in Affinity Photo, starting with a RAW file and ending up with a finished piece of work that I can export. This is my basic RAW image, which has opened in the Develop Persona. This is a workspace dedicated to RAW development and presents us with a set of options for initial editing before we move into the main photo persona and start working with layers. I am going to do the bare minimum with the initial RAW development, choosing instead to focus on non-destructive layer work. But here, I'll enable Shadows and Highlights, and I'll move the Highlights slider down, just to reduce the overall intensity of the tones in the waterfall here. I'll also go across to the Lens panel, and I'll bring the Lens Correction Scale down to around 98%. This is a slightly hidden trick in Photo. Wide-angle lens corrections will sometimes result in the edges of the image being pushed outside of the crop boundaries, but you can try reducing the scale slightly to recover these edges. There are some people in the bottom of this shot, but I'm going to remove them later using a non-destructive layer technique. This is about all I'm going to do for the initial development, so I can now click Develop up here. Before I do, I can also change this output option to Raw Layer Embedded or Linked if I want to take advantage of non-destructive RAW, which will let me redevelop this image at any time. Now we're through to the main photo persona, which is where the real work can begin. First, I'm going to do some in-painting to remove the people down here. I'll create a new pixel layer on the layers panel here, and I will double-click on this layer to rename it, retouching. Now on my tools panel, I'll long-click on the Healing Brush tool and select the Inpainting Brush tool. On the Context toolbar, I'll change this option from Current Layer to Current Layer and Below. Now, if I zoom in and paint over these two people in the shot, they will be removed. But the inpainting result will be added to this new layer, leaving the original image information intact. Now I'll do some basic tone manipulation. I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves, or alternatively I can use Command M on Mac, Control M on Windows. On the Curves graph here I'm going to create a node and drag it down, then click drag to create a second node and bring it up slightly, and finally I'll create a third node to really bring out the highlight detail. Next, I'm going to use some straightforward brushwork to control the lighting in the image. I want to emphasize the waterfall and de-emphasize the surrounding areas. On the Layers panel, I'll create a new pixel layer and call this Brushwork. Then I'll set its Blend Mode to Overlay and bring its opacity down to around 30%. Now on the Tools panel, I'll select the Paintbrush tool. The default brush is sufficient for this workflow and only needs enlarging, but if you have been using other brushes, you may need to quickly change back to a soft round brush. On the Brushes panel, I'll select the Masking category and I'll pick a large, soft round brush. It's still not quite big enough, so I can increase the brush width further using the right square bracket key. Now I'm set to pure black by default, so I can click drag and paint away on both sides of the image, avoiding the waterfall. This is very similar to the popular dodging and burning technique, but I'm doing this on a separate pixel layer to keep it non-destructive. To get rid of the brush nozzle, I can use H to switch to the view tool, which is useful as it stops you from accidentally doing anything else to your document. I also want to enhance the waterfall, but for this I'm going to create another pixel layer and call it Waterfall. I'll try 30% again for now and set its blend mode to Overlay. Then I'll use B to switch back to the Paintbrush tool, and now I want to change my colour to pure white. I can do that by clicking here, or alternatively I can use X to quickly switch between my primary and secondary colours. I'll paint over the waterfall. And this is perhaps too strong, so I'll take the opacity 
down to about 20%. Now let's focus on color work. One of my go-to adjustments for any type of image editing is typically the selective color adjustment. So I'll add that from the layer menu. On the dialog, I'm currently targeting the reds. I'll bring the cyan slider down, then change the drop down to yellows. And here, I'll bring cyan all the way down, then increase the yellow slider. And this begins to lend a more autumnal feel to the image. This adjustment can also target tonal ranges. I'll switch to blacks, then start to reduce the yellow slider. This introduces a blue color cast into the darker tones. It's very easy to overdo this, so I'll bring it back down to a small value, around minus 5 or 6%. Then I'll close the dialog. I may also try an HSL adjustment to further tweak the colors. This can be added from the layer menu, or alternatively, I can use Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. Here I can target specific color ranges, so I'll choose reds. Then I'll increase the luminosity, which will increase perceptual brightness of the reds. Due to the relationship between luminosity and saturation, however, this also desaturates the red tones. If I don't want this, I can either bring the saturation slider up, or I can switch to a hue saturation value color model up here, where the brightness or value is independent of saturation. I'll do the same for the yellows, increasing the luminosity to brighten these tones. And I'll close the dialog. Now I'm going to use a live clarity filter to enhance structure or texture in the image. To do this, I'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Sharpen, Clarity. Think of live filters as adjustment layers, except they apply filter effects. This means they can be masked, their opacity value can be changed, and of course, their settings can be altered at any point during editing. They allow you to maintain a non-destructive workflow without bloating the file size by creating merged pixel layers. I'll drag the strength slider all the way up to enhance the detail in the waterfall here. Then, I'll close the dialog. I also might want to perform some fine detail sharpening. Although you can use an unsharp mask filter for this, I'll actually add a live high pass filter. This passes through frequencies in the image, with the threshold being controlled by the radius slider here. So I'll check monochrome, and I'll bring the radius up until I start to see some fine detail appearing. On the dialog, I'll set the layer's blend mode to soft light. It's a good idea to be zoomed in at 100% to preview this filter accurately. So I'll use Command 1 on Mac, Control 1 on Windows. Now, if I start to move the radius slider, you'll see a subtle change in the perceptual sharpness. If I wanted to be more in depth with my sharpening, I could actually stack multiple high pass filters. I'll set the radius to 3 pixels. Then I'll duplicate this layer using Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows. And on the duplicated copy, I'll change the radius to 5 pixels. Now, if I shift click and select both of these layers and hide them, you can see the original result. Then, if I show them again, you'll see the type of sharpening effect I can apply with these two high pass filters. It's really fine and detailed without looking over-sharpened or exhibiting typical sharpening artifacts. I'll fit to screen, which is Command-0 on Mac, Control-0 on Windows, and I will leave it there for the major editing. The beauty of working non-destructively, however, is that I can go in and revise any of my editing decisions. For example, I might select the brushwork layer and increase its opacity to 50%. I can do this with 5 on the keyboard rather than having to use the opacity slider. I can also perhaps increase the waterfall layer opacity to 30%. These two minor adjustments lend more overall mood to the image, creating more contrast between the waterfall and the side areas. I can easily compare what effect a particular layer is having 
by simply hiding and showing it again. I'll want to save this document with all the layer work intact, so I'll go to File, Save As. I'll choose to save it into Documents for now, and I'll stick to the original raw image file name, then click Save. Now I can close the document down using Command W on Mac, Control W on Windows, and go to File, Open Recent, and reopen the .af photo file. I've just saved. The image reappears with the layer stack available, and this gives me so much flexibility because I can come back to this document at a later date and change any of the layer settings if I wish. Finally, I'll export a JPEG version of this document so I can share it. To do this, I'll go to File, Export, then choose JPEG from the Format drop-down. I can leave all the settings as they are and click Export, and I'll export to the Documents folder. Now I have my shareable JPEG image, which I can upload, post, and send to other users. And there we go. A basic image edit using completely non-destructive techniques in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.